Awesome. Uh, so I hope I believe it's uh, evening or day right now. So good evening from uh, this side of the world. And uh, uh, my name is Saad. I'm from Pakistan, studying in University of Yas. The problem I would be presenting is that uh, I have to propose an experiment using Oli camera and standard sensors of your smartphone to prove or disprove the flat Earth hypothesis using the same equipment, estimate the size of the Earth with as high accuracy as possible. So uh, just a minute. So from the problem, so from the problem uh, we have taken the advantage to include GPS within the sensors of mobile. From that, we can get info about our longitude and latitude. We are assuming at this point that the Earth is spherical, so we are taking it as an assumption. So what we are trying to model is the time difference between the sunrise or sunset at location A and location B. That can be then matched with the experimental results or fitted with already available data to test the hypothesis. So to model our system, we are just simply starting with a sphere and a plane cutting it in a half along the z-axis. This would be the north-south pole of Earth. On the other hand, we know that Earth spins at an angle of approximately 23.5 degrees from certain axis. So we change our reference frame to that coordinate system. So here the black line represents the axis of spin, which is at 23.5 degrees from our plane. Also is, in, also is, is we indicated the angle gamma that is associated with the revolution of Earth around the sun. So this changes from zero to 360 as time passes throughout the year. So we just construct the equation of plane by plugging in three points in this determinant. These points are the origin, the zero zero, uh, the triple zero point, the, uh, another point that is zero zero R along the z-axis point, uh, where R is along the z-axis and uh, some point written as R sine gamma and R cos gamma, that's a general point. So solving this, we get an equation of this plane uh, in the XYZ coordinate system. So now we are changing our coordinate system to beta equal to minus 23.5 degrees and the transformation is also very trivial. Notice that only X and Z are changed to X dash and Z dash. We are only moving in the X, Z, while uh, Y remains the same as uh, can be seen in the diagram. Uh, in the next page, I will show you uh, into the, that has gone below before, before this transformation is in uh, plane of X, Z. So by using uh, equation two in equation one, we are getting this uh, form of X dash in terms of X and Z dash. So now we can, uh, so now we can use the equation of uh, plane that we derived earlier that is x equal to minus y tan gamma uh, in the equation of x dash we just form. And by using the fact that y dash equal to y in this transformation, we can we get the equation of blue plane that was shown earlier in tilted coordinate system that is at minus 23.5 degrees with the original one. Uh, now we change the tilted Cartesian coordinate into spherical coordinates by these transformations. We are doing this as our inputs will in be in the form of latitude displayed as epsilon over here and longitude that is displayed as psi over here. So by plugging in these, in, uh, so by plugging in these uh, transformations into our equations of plane in tilted coordinate system, we convert equation of plane into spherical coordinate with our z axis pointing in the direction of spin axis of the Earth. So by plugging in some more constants to just to clean up the expression, some more algebra is done to simplify the expression, uh, and we can get an expression in the form of secant x that is shown at the end of the slide, where x is our longitude plus omega t that this the additional angle that is covered by the Earth when it spins around its axis. So this is just uh, what we desire to, uh, so the, what we desire to measure is not just X because that won't have any sense, but Delta X would give us the time difference at two different longitudes that we can then confirm by experiment. So rest is just putting up all the constants back to, the, to get the final seemingly complicated expression, which is not really complicated because most of these things uh, are just constants. So just to make it neater, we uh, wrote a code to calculate this uh, stuff and uh, uh, what this code would require is uh, latitude and longitude of uh, location A and time of the year. The reference set in our code is uh, June 21st. Uh, so you have to count the number of days to pass from June 21st to the day at which experiment is being done to get that angle gamma. So uh, this is the code uh, that is written in C language. And uh, if anyone wants to test it later, they, can, they are most, more than welcome to do that. And uh, from our experiments uh, and data that was already available, this, uh, the model that we have calculated really fits well. And the experiment we performed uh, were by choosing two places in Pakistan, one near Islamabad, which is the capital of the capital of the country, and the uh, other near Balochistan. The time of sunrise was noted and difference was matched uh, with that predicted from the model and the result was accurate within the range of seconds. Uh, unfortunately, this could not be shown over here uh, because the time we had uh, was very limited. Actually, we did the experiment when the IPT released the problems. So we really did not had the experimental stuff to put over here, but the errors uh, were really uh, very low. And uh, this actually disproves the flat earth hypothesis. 
and uh, the errors were mainly in the experimental result that were due to uh, fluctuations in temperature, height above sea level, and variation in temperature, and etc. and so on. So the next part uh, uh, would be presented by Muhammad Umar, and I would request Matthews to allow him to share his screen. Um, now, since you have agreed that the Earth is spherical, now there's planets, what its radius is. So we are, we have procedure we are here, uh, he's using that during the sunrise or sunset, scheduled travel along the height of a building. And we have used the time required for the schedule to sweep a known height of a building uh, to calculate the radius of the earth. Here, for this procedure, uh, let's suppose this is sun and this is earth, and this is the shadow of the earth. And if I want to uh, uh, find the find this, um, equation for this shadow, this would form actually a cylinder. The shadow will form the, cylinder and this cylinder will uh, I will write the equation of the cylinder in this y which is x dash and y dash coordinate system and, I, and then I will uh, transform the coordinate system to the this uh, pink one actually this pink one I will like to call it as an absolute frame of reference this is the equation of the cylinder and this is actually the shifted in the shifted, uh, the same equation of the cylinder in the shifted coordinate system. And then this is the point. Let's suppose this point is the bottom of the building, or maybe it, uh, it could be at the top of the building. And the position of this point can be specified by phi, theta, and r. And um, since this point moves along the, this axis of rotation, which is actually tilted due to the, uh, this absolute coordinate system, which I call it earlier. Uh, this point, as this point changes, this is actually uh, this actually is a function of time. So theta will change with time. So I want to find the position of point P in uh, first in spherical coordinate. Then I will translate that coordinate system into Cartesian coordinate, this red one. And finally, I will go from uh, red coordinate system to this uh, absolute coordinate system. These are the, actually the equations. This is actually the equation of the uh, that point P, and uh, this is uh, this point P is first translated to this uh, coordinate system through these equations, and later on to the final absolute uh, coordinate system through these equations. Now I have the position of point P in the x, y, and z. All three positions, I have the position of point P. These all are, are the function of time, since this theta is a function of time. And I also have a question of the cylinder in this absolute coordinate system. Now, what happens uh, these points when the top or the bottom of the building intersects this um, cylinder, then these points become the part of that cylinder. So I will put X, Y, and Z from these equation into the equation of the cylinder, which form the shadow of the earth. So putting all these equation here, these X values of X, Y, and Z, and uh, from the geometry, you can see that phi is related to latitude with this relationship, and theta is a function of time, uh, which will change like this. Putting all these, um, these um, expressions into the, original equation will give us this long equation. Actually, this equation tells us the tall, this equation first will be used for the top, like the bottom of the building, when the shadow sweeps to the bottom of the um, building. Then when we use, this is radius of earth, and then this is the height of the building. Uh, no, actually, this is actually the height from uh, sea level. And this, the same equation will be used, but R dash this time will be used as uh, in addition, we will add uh, the height of the building there too. So we will get two equations. We know we have now two equations and the uh, time difference me? between these can, equations. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask you to, to quickly finish because we have some, yeah, yeah. some other presentations. And uh, finally, I have three equations there. And these three equations are implicit equations. We cannot solve it um, uh, manually. So we will put these equations into MATLAB or Mathematica or somewhere else. 
and our shoulder is there still. And on this well equation, we plot in the, the same equation was plotted in the decimals with the height from the sea level as 540 and the height of the building in 110. There we see the time difference between the top and the bottom. So from this, we get uh, the uh, radius of the earth within the 80 kilometer accuracy. Um, except, except. Actually, this equation, my equation that we drive is extremely generalized. We can use them for simulation. The angle, the angle can be tilted, and any, uh, any angle can be used, and any any uh, part of the year can be used, and uh, any equation on the earth can be used. So these are extremely generalized equation. This maybe uh, this is the part uh, top of the building, and this is the bottom. As this case, this intersects like as I said. In this way, we can uh, calculate the radius of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth was within 80 kilometers of uh, accuracy and certainty. So actually, we were using a mobile phone. So, so uh, as the, this was uh, sweeping, the, um, the rays of the sun was is, was sweeping the uh, building. So the luminosity was changing as we were making video. So this time is actually the time difference we use in the equation. So uh, from this, we, did, we also did the experiment that was in perfect agreement with all these calculations. And these are the references for the GeoGebra that uh, simulation that we used and the decimals, the equation we plot here and all other sources. If we have any questions, we can ask.